Welcome to the Cobbler Crackdown. I am your host, DJ Peach Cobbler. Art is dead, and I'm selling an NFT of its death certificate. We've made some changes to the show this week, and it's not just my new lithium prescription, which the voices keep telling me not to take. That's right. This week, we've got a new co-host. Everyone, put your hands together for... The Unbearable Abyss. Say something for the folks at home, Abyss. <laughs> In financial news, economists have been stumped. Why has the American economy been growing but wages have stagnated? The wealth is there. It's being produced. So where is it going if not into the hands of the people that create this wealth? President Biden has found it. That's right. President Joe Biden has found over $100 trillion in decades of lost wages behind the couch in the Roosevelt Room of the White House last Tuesday. President Biden said on the matter, The reason I was rummaging around behind the sofa is simple. I dropped a hush puppy back there in 2010. I remember it like it was yesterday. I've just been informed that it was yesterday. I'm so sorry. My stutter keeps acting up. What a wacky story. I guess the free market wins again, huh, Unbearable Abyss? The old world is dying and the new one struggles to be born. Now is the time of monsters. <laughs> In entertainment news, the Walt Disney Company has acquired the rights to the Christian faith, which has long-reaching implications for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Now, famous characters such as Jesus Christ, the Roman Empire, and both the loving and vengeful God can all appear in the newest Marvel films. Disney doesn't plan to sit on their thumbs with this hot new property either, as they've already announced a new Heaven edition to Disney World in Orlando, Florida, as well as announcing a Jesus Christ origin story TV show created exclusively for Disney+. Many devout Christians have been upset at the news, as Disney has begun making alterations to the established canon of the Christian faith. For example, all baptisms can now only occur in Splash Mountain, and also Jesus is now gay, except in China. In fuck you news, chairman of the Federal Reserve and future prison wife, Jerome Powell, has continued fighting against inflation as working class families across America struggle to support their pop vinyl collections and also feed their children. In a press conference on May 4th, Powell's mask fell right off. Just right off, it fell right off his fucking face. Blaming inflation on the competitive labor market and high wages. Uh, high wages. And it is therefore the Fed's goal to keep wages down. Poverty is not an accident. It is the most important cog in the machine that is eating you, that will eat your children, and that has eaten all of our futures. Buy gay Oreos. In the wake of the newest and hottest tragedies, the secretary of mass shootings, Dryn Forsmith, has proposed a novel new solution to prevent school shootings. Banana peels placed at each and every school entrance so as to trip these ne'er-do-wells before they can paint the school cafeteria brain matter gray. While the idea has seen broad bipartisan support because it won't accomplish anything and they can all get behind that, critics have pointed to the landmark Supreme Court case Coyote vs. Runner which outlawed banana peels being used as weapons. In financial news, again, a chairman of the Federal Reserve and future recipient of a free haircut, Jerome Powell, sold over $500,000 in securities after a closed-door Fed meeting last week. We reached out to Powell for comment, and he responded, I did not sell these securities due to any insider information that I possess. I've just come to the conclusion, as an independent investor, that the chairman of the Federal Reserve is a total dipshit, so I'm going long on canned goods and shotguns. In insufferable news, the Amber Heard and Johnny Depp defamation trial concluded last week, and I don't care. In Twitter drama news, convicted influencer and alleged war criminal DJ Peach Cobbler, aka Surveina Smirt, aka the Butcher of Trovnik, was banned from Twitter last week for tweeting. If you're an internet comedian slash influencer slash foot pick seller, and you toe the line and spout the blue checkmark opinions so that you can get a job at a legacy media company, you're a cuck, 
and I'm going to fuck your wife with my madness. Kill yourself. Twitter has strict guidelines about threatening harm or even wishing harm upon others. We reached out to Cobbler for comment, and he hurled a brick through our studio window with the following note attached to it. Wishing harm upon others is against Twitter rules? Really? Remember when hashtag kill all men trended for days? But of course, I'm not even wishing for the death of men, as these are not but mice. Kill yourself. DJ Peach Cobbler has returned to Twitter this week, however, and he managed to make it almost 24 hours before telling someone to drink bleach. In climate news, microplastics have been found in freshly fallen Antarctic snow for the first time. Microplastic pollution has become an increasingly more discussed issue this past decade, as it has been linked to hormone disruption, falling fertility rates, and birth defects. While microplastics may be the greatest risk to human health that we have ever encountered, this newsman's gotta say, they are delicious. Mmm. Mmm. Oh. In European news, which is like American news, but just not covered in gravy, Poland, following a near-total abortion ban, is now forcing doctors to register every patient who becomes pregnant. While this registry is yet to be used in this way, it could be used to prosecute for illegal abortions, as Polish prosecutors do have access to the data. When it comes to international news, however, it's important to keep in mind the culture of the nation or ethnic group which you are discussing. So, to my American viewers, this may seem a gross invasion of privacy, but the fact is, it's all theater. It will have no real-world impact. Uh, no woman has been impregnated in Poland in the past three decades, as it is a nation inhabited solely by bottoms. It's just a nation of femboys who like getting pegged and women who have never felt a penis. In this way, Poland is much like California or Serbia or my subreddit. Please use my subreddit, like it's just there. In African news, the nation of Somalia has been suffering from a famine, which is the result of the worst drought in four decades in combination with the fact that all the people there just refuse to stop buying those gosh darn lattes. Just make coffee at home. Somali president Hassan Sheikh Mohammed has said of the famine, with the grace of God, we shall soon be blessed once again with avocado toast. Of course, the Russo-Ukrainian war is expected to cause widespread food shortages as both nations are major grain exporters. The nations that are going to be hit hardest from the shortage are going to be in Sub-Saharan Africa. This caused US officials to warn African nations that they should, in the future, refrain from purchasing grain from Russians, as it was likely stolen from the Ukrainians. In exchange for letting their people starve to dunk on the Ruskies, the US promised to reward African leaders with Good boy points. That's right, African politicians. For every 50 people you let starve for America, you will receive one good boy point. Now, these cannot be exchanged for food. Obviously, we need it. However, 10 good boy points can be exchanged for six months of peace. That's right, the US will not invade you for only 10 good boy points, unless, of course, Raytheon has a bad quarter. Uh, well, what's your take on this, Abyss? You are enslaved by comfort. If a concentration camp were in your front yard, you would close the curtains. There is no concentration camp in my front yard. The Homeowners Association made me take it down. In entertainment news, following the box office flop, Morbius becoming a meme, Sony re-released the film in over 1,000 theaters nationwide. It made $30,000. Sony did not understand that the joke was that no one had seen the movie and were quoting fake lines at each other. That was, that was why it was funny. Although, frankly, a lot more people should have seen this movie, especially the re-release, because in the re-release, they edited it to include just the right amount of racial slurs, and it is therefore now a perfect film. <laughs> he really morbed all over those Puerto Ricans. <laughs> they had it coming. Of course, one of Morbius's many passionate fans have launched a petition. We were all busy that weekend. Please bring Morbius to the theater a third time. <laughs> Everyone play it cool. They might fall for it. In cute little kitty news, scientists have discovered that cats do not meow in the company of other cats. It appears to be a sound made by them to mimic the sound of human infants, and is therefore a sound they make exclusively towards humans in order to get their attention. 
How evil. Oh my god. Kitty. Hey, kitty. This has been the Cobbler Crackdown. And don't worry. Contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you.